That's exactly what you should be doing is trying to figure out who it is that you're trying to be, right? And you, you, you aim at that and then you use everything you learn as a means of building that person that you want to be. And, and I really mean want to be. I don't mean should be. Even those things, those things are going to overlap. And it's important to distinguish between those because that's partly, and this is back down to the micro routine analysis. So if I was saying, well, you're going to try to make yourself more industrious. Okay, number one, specify your damn goals. Because how are you going to hit something if you don't know what it is? That isn't going to happen. And often people won't specify their goals too because they don't like to specify conditions for failure. So if you keep yourself all vague and foggy, which is real easy because that's just a matter of not doing as well, then you don't know when you fail. And people might say, well, I really don't want to know when I fail because that's painful. So I'll, I'll keep myself blind about when I fail. That's fine, except you'll fail all the time then. You just won't know it until you've failed so badly that you're done. And that can easily happen by the time you're 40. So, so I would recommend that you don't let that happen. So that's willful blindness, right? You could have known, but you chose not to. Okay, so once you get your goal structure set up, you think, okay, if I could have this life, it looks like that might be worth living, despite the fact that it's going to be, you know, anxiety provoking and threatening, and there's going to be some suffering and loss involved in all of that. Obviously, the goal is to, to have a vision for your life such that all things considered, that justifies your effort. Okay, so then what do you do? Well, then, then you turn down to the micro routines. It's like, okay, well, this is what I'm aiming for. How does that instantiate itself day to day, week to week, month to month? And that's where something like a schedule can be unbelievably useful. Google Calendar. It's like, make a damn schedule and stick to it. Okay, so what's the rule with the schedule? It's not a bloody prison. That's the first thing that people do wrong. They say, well, I don't like to have, follow a schedule. Well, it's like, well, what kind of schedule are you setting up? Well, I, sh I have to do this, then I have to do this, then I have to do this, you know, and then I just go play video games because who wants to do all these things that I have to do? It's like, wrong. Set the damn schedule up so that you have the day you want. That's the trick. It's like, okay, I've got tomorrow. If I was going to set it up so it was the best possible day I could have, practically speaking, what would it look like? Well, then you schedule that. And obviously, there's a bit of responsibility that's going to go along with that. Because if you have any sense, one of the things that you're going to insist upon is that at the end of the day, you're not in worse shape than you were that, than at the beginning of the day, right? Because that's a stupid day. If you have a bunch of those in a row, you just dig, you know, you dig yourself a hole and then you bury yourself in it. It's like, sorry, that's just not a good strategy. It means then if you want to change your life, your personal reality, that means fundamentally you have to change your personality. Mm -hmm. That means you have to start thinking about what you've been thinking about and change it. You have to begin to become aware of your unconscious habits and behaviors and modify them. Mm -hmm. Then you have to look at certain emotions that keep you anchored to the past mm -hmm. and decide if those emotions belong in your future. Mm -hmm. And I think after all these years, Ed, I think that most people try to create a new personal reality as the same personality wow. and it doesn't work. You know, you literally have to become someone else. Mm -hmm. So the process then, most people, they're thinking the same thoughts, they're making the same choices, they're demonstrating the same behaviors, they're creating the same experiences that stamp the same networks of neurons into the same patterns, all for the familiar feeling that they call themselves. And if you keep doing that over and over again, there's a principle in neuroscience that says that nerve cells that fire together wire together. Mm -hmm. So people begin to hardwire their brain into a very finite signature into these automatic programs. Mm -hmm. Turns out by the time we're 35 years old, we become a set of memorized behaviors, emotional reactions, beliefs, perceptions, unconscious attitudes that function just like a computer program. So when people want to change, they're using 5% of their conscious mind and they mm -hmm. can think positively all they want, mm -hmm. but the programs are running subconsciously telling them that they're negative. So, so the only way to do that then is to get into the operating system. And getting into the operating system of, of that, the, where those programs exist, requires then people beginning to do some inward work. Mm -hmm. If you sit down and you disconnect from your outer world, you close your eyes, and you play some music in the background, you sit your body down, mm -hmm. and not smelling anything or tasting anything or mm -hmm. experiencing anything or feeling anything and you're not thinking about or anticipating the future or remembering the familiar past that moment that elegant moment where you fall into the present moment is where the magic happens mm -hmm. and so after looking at enough brain scans in the process of studying the uh, transformation 
Yeah, I call that getting beyond yourself because yep. when you disconnect from your present personal reality mm -hmm. and personality, now you're ready to create something else. And Great. so what thoughts do you want to fire and wire in your brain? What behaviors do you want to demonstrate? And the act of rehearsing the behavior mm -hmm. uh, begins to install the neurological hardware in your brain, Great. primes it to look like the experience has already yes. happened. Yep. 20% of your day has to be responsibility and obligation, or maybe it's more than that, depending on how far behind you are. But even that, you can, you can ask yourself, okay, well, I've got these responsibilities. I have to schedule the damn things in. What's the right ratio of responsibility to reward? And you can ask yourself that, just like you'd negotiate with someone who is working for you. It's like, okay, you gotta work tomorrow. Okay, so I want you to work tomorrow. And you might say, okay, well, what are you gonna do for me that makes it likely that I'll work for you? Well, you could ask yourself that, you know. So maybe you do an hour of, of responsibility and then you play a video game for 15 minutes. I don't know, whatever turns your crank, man. But, you know, you have to negotiate with yourself and not tyrannize yourself. Like you're negotiating with someone that you care for, that you would like to be productive and have a good life. And, and that's how you make the schedule. It's like, and then you look at the day and you think, well, if I had that day, that'd be good. Great. You know, and you, you're useless and horrible, so you'll probably only hit it with about 70% accuracy, but that beats the hell out of zero, right? And if you hit it even with 50% accuracy, another rule is, well, aim for 51% the next week, or 50.5% for God's sake, or because you're, you're going to hit that position where things start to loop back positively and spiral you upward. And so... So that's one way that you can work on your conscientiousness, is to plan a life you'd like to have. And, and you do that partly by referring to social norms. That's more or less rescuing your father from the belly of the whale. But the way, other way you do that is by having a little conversation with yourself about as, as if you don't really know who you are, because you know what you're like. You won't do what you're told. You won't do what you tell yourself to do. You must have noticed that. It's like you're a bad employee and a worse boss. And both of those work you know, for you. You don't know what you want to do, and then when you tell yourself what to do, you don't do it anyways. You should fire yourself and find someone else to be. But, but you know, my point is, is that you have to understand that you're not your own servant, so to speak. You're someone that you have to negotiate with, and, that's, and you, you're someone that you want to present the opportunity of having a good life to. And that's hard for people, because they don't like themselves very much. So, you know, they're always like cracking the whip and then procrastinating and cracking the whip and then procrastinating. And it's like, God, it's so boring. And when you decide to say, okay, I'm going to change, and you decide one thing, I'm not going to eat this food, I'm going to wake up earlier, uh, I'm going to do something aerobic, I'm not going to have mm -hmm. sugar after 6 o'clock, whatever it is, yep. the person, whatever choice a person makes, the moment you make a choice to do something differently. And the hardest part about change is not making the same choice as you did the day before. Get ready, because it's going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to feel unfamiliar. There's gonna be some uncertainty and unpredictability, and that's the moment the game is on. Yes. So then, most people, their, their body has been conditioned emotionally to be the mind. So now, the, so the, the body says, wow, uh, I'd rather hang on to my guilt mm -hmm. than take a chance in possibility. I'd rather live in fear yes. than trust in the unknown. So, yep. so once the person feels uncomfortable, the body goes, whoa, wait a second, uh, we're out of the program here. And body starts influencing the mind. That's right. So it says, start tomorrow, you'll never change. Right. You don't have the money to do this. You're not good enough. Your mother told you you were this. Your yeah. father's fault. It's your ex's fault. Mm -hmm. You know, all of the voices that mm -hmm. come up. Now, here's the deal. If you respond to those voices, those same thoughts as if they're true. By the way, they're always going on behind right. the scenes of your awareness, but right. now they're amplified because you're outside your comfort zone. You believe in that thought. That thought's gonna lead to the same choice, which is gonna lead to the same behavior, which is gonna create the same experience and produce the same emotion. Mm -hmm. And the person's gonna say, this feels right. Yes. No, 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 that feels familiar. Going from the old self to the new self is a neurological, it's a biological, it's a chemical, it's a hormonal, it's a genetic death of the old self. Mm -hmm. And people will say to me, in that void, in that unknown, mm -hmm. I can't predict my future. And I'll say to them, the best way to predict your future is to create it. I love Not it. from the known, but from the unknown. I love it. So close your eyes now and think about that vision. Mm. Once you start thinking about that vision of your future, you're activating the creative centers in your brain. Mm -hmm. 
and naturally mm -hmm. you begin to think about putting yourself in the scene. Yes. And the act of doing that when you're truly passionate and truly present, the moment you're defined by that vision, when the thought in your mind becomes the experience, mm -hmm. you begin to feel the emotion of the event before it's made manifest. Yes. Now, you're giving your body mm -hmm. a sampling, a taste I of the future. It. And now, if a thought and a feeling create a new state of being, you're combining a clear intention with an elevated emotion, mm -hmm. and now you're beginning to change your biology, and you're seeing a whole new landscape that you could never see before, because you're no longer viewing your future through the lens of the past. I love this. Now, this, this requires, then, something really specific, because most people will wait for their, their, uh, their wealth to feel abundance, they'll right. wait for their success to feel empowered, they'll wait for their new relationship yep. to feel loved. They'll, they'll get all these things when. Yes, right. so, so, so think about that. The absence of getting those things causes people to live in lack their entire life. That's right. And so they're waiting for something outside of them to change how they feel inside, inside of them. them. And if they're not creating a new life, mm -hmm. then they're not pr applying the proper principles, then they keep all their manifestations, all their dreams at, at arm's length. So let's think about this. Yeah. If you get up feeling gratitude, if you yeah. get up feeling empowered, if you get up feeling whole, if you get up feeling unlimited, mm -hmm. yeah. why, would you, why would you worry about whether it was gonna come or not? You would feel like it already happened. Hey Chris here, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a huge favor, hit the thumbs up icon because it makes YouTube like my channel more. And if you want more awesome, helpful content just like this delivered to you on autopilot, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell icon beside the subscribe button. And also, I think you'd really enjoy this video, so you can check that out next.